Hey, I'm Markia. Want to hear something scary? Legend of Madame Koi Koi. Having power in a situation is a double-edged sword. Don't abuse that power because if you do, you better get good at sleeping with one eye open. Farah was the new student at the Hillcrest Boarding School for Young Women in Lagos, Nigeria. Every school has its own social hierarchy, so she thought she might have a hard time fitting in and catching up. But this school was different. There was one top dog here, the history professor, Madame Chloe. Madame Chloe ruled with an iron fist. A rumor was that fist had met with face several times over the years. Students had not reported the physical abuse, but people had seen the bruises. Madame Chloe always dressed impeccably, in expensive name brands, usually a skirt and blouse, and always with her signature bright red stilettos. The sound of those heels smartly clipping down the hallways would quiet the student body and even the administration alike. When she walked past, a chill filled the air. The students nicknamed her Madame Koi Koi because of the noise her heels made on the floor. One day, Farah stood at her locker across from Madame Chloe's classroom and saw a student, Adama, rushing out of the room. She was crying. Her face was mottled and swollen, though she tried to cover the damage done by Madame Chloe. Farah followed her into the bathroom, where a group of teens were already consoling her. Enough was enough. The faculty repeatedly ignored their complaints. They wouldn't let that monster keep getting away with this. Farah and the four teens planned an attack on Madame Chloe. It would be swift and immediate. And Farah, thrilled at finally being included, agreed to teach her a lesson. That evening, Madame Chloe was locking up her classroom. The rest of the building was empty. She turned around and was amused to see the enraged group of students step out from the darkened hallway. Immediately, she began mocking Adama for running out earlier and not being able to take some much-needed discipline. That is, until Adama took her softball bat and swung it through to the side of Madame Chloe's skull. The teens paused, a bit shocked. It was one thing to plan something, another to see it done. But then, Madame Chloe, while on the ground, dug her nails into Adama's calf muscle and then bit into it, ripping into her flesh. Adama cried out and began hammering the bat on her back to get loose. And that's when the rest of them went crazy. All of them began attacking Madame Chloe. Everyone except Farah, who stood as lookout. After several minutes, the mob backed up. Her face was mush, her body severely beaten completely unrecognizable. If it wasn't for her red stilettos, you wouldn't have known who it was. Still fueled with adrenaline, they swiftly cleaned up and buried the remains in the woods. For the first night in a long time, all five teens slept like babies. Had they gone too far? Yes, definitely. But they did not feel much remorse for ridding the world of their monster. The next few days were filled with inquiries from police. What could have happened? Where had the professor gone? But when some of the teens responsible began going missing themselves, the investigation took a more serious turn. Of the five teens complicit in the murder, three were missing. They had been on a field trip and simply vanished. Adama rushed to Farah's dorm, locking the door behind her. What was happening? Were they next? Was it possible Madame Chloe had survived? Of course not. It seemed ridiculous as they both had placed pieces of her body into a grave in the woods. No one could have survived that. Maybe the others had experienced a bout of guilt and had simply run away. As they began to calm each other down, a faint noise began growing louder from the hallway outside. They ran to the door, pressed their ears against it, and listen. It suddenly stopped. Farah could hardly breathe. Adama nodded to look down, her lips trembling. Right outside was the silhouette of two legs. As they watched, a tip 
of a red stiletto peeked in under the doorway. Their eyes widened. The door flew open with such force, it blew them back to the floor, debris flying across the room. Rubbing the dust from their eyes, Adama and Farah looked up to see a nightmare vision. Madame Koiko. Holding the same bat that Adama had just weeks before, with her neck barely attached and body patched back together, the professor limped steadily toward the screaming teens and raised her weapon high. Their fear kept them frozen to the spot as with one deliberate swing of the bat, the zombie-esque monster cracked Adama's skull open. Blood splatter covered Farah as she whimpered in shock. The thing that had been Madame Chloe raised the bat again, this time pummeling Farah's throat, almost crushing her windpipe. Both teens, barely alive, stared into their attacker's face as she grinned and then vanished into thin air. Adama had bled out quickly, but amazingly, Farah survived. Upon being rushed to the hospital and barely being able to speak, she did manage one word that she would repeat when asked what had happened. Koi. Koi. It didn't take long for rumors to emerge. Most people think the story of Madame Koi Koi is made up. But if you listen in the halls of Hillcrest late at night, you can hear the faint sounds of her blood-red stilettos coming towards you. Fresh from San Diego, California comes a sunglasses brand I buy for myself and all of my friends. I'm talking about Blender's Eyewear, and you're going to be just as hooked when you see how awesome these shades are. Unlike expensive big brand shades that you've probably lost or smashed in the past, blenders are actually affordable. So you're not going to cry as much when the inevitable happens. I love that blenders offer so many types of glasses to choose from. And it's not just sunglasses, because one thing I've discovered in the last couple of years is the importance of blue light glasses. Since I spend a lot of time looking at screens, it's important to take good care of my eyes. They're perfect for when I'm working on set and I spend more time than usual on my phone. Live life in forward motion with Blenders today. To score 15% off your Blenders purchase, visit BlendersEyewear.com and enter promo code SCARYVIP. That's BlendersEyewear.com code SCARYVIP for 15% off. Blenders, rocked with pride worldwide. Vampires, monsters, and ghouls. Oh my. I like my movies scary. And when I'm in the mood for something bloody, I turn to Shudder, where every week they release something new. I'm really looking forward to rewatching Queen of the Damned. The late music star Aaliyah stars as Akasha, the powerful queen of the vampires, an important part of Lestat's bloody vampiric journey. I even have a Jen Bartel print of Akasha on my wall. It's a bittersweet cult classic must-see. Demon Knight is also well worth the watch, and hit me up on social media afterwards so we can talk about it. Shudder's streaming library has just about everything, from original movies like Superhost, The Boy Behind the Door, and Creepshow by executive producer Greg Nicotero of The Walking Dead. Stream all this and more from Shudder's ever-growing library ad-free for just $5.99 a month. Shudder has everything supernatural, thriller, and horror. I can't get enough of it. You're going to love it too. And right now you can stream your first 30 days of Shudder for free. Go to Shudder.com and use code something scary. That's S-H-U-D-D-E-R.com code something scary. Stream free for your first 30 days by going to Shudder.com code something scary. If you'd like to submit a story, send me an email at something scary at snarl.com. Like and share this video if it gave you the chills. And don't forget to subscribe to Snarled and turn on the bell for notifications. And if you dare, follow me on social media. Until next time, my dark darlings, sweet dreams.